PC Calculus 10.5 lesson, testing convergence at endpoints. I've been impressed in this unit that quite a few of the titles are extremely misleading. We'll do some testing convergence at endpoints, but mostly we come up with new tests, deal with things. Um, first things first, use a ratio test to see if one of our n squared converges or diverges. So that's 1 over n plus 1 squared times n plus 1. Pardon me keep messing up my ratio test, n squared, uh, and of course limit as n approaches infinity. Um, and if you don't know, that's 1, which is inconclusive. For 1 over n, uh, hopefully you can see you get the same thing. So what do we do? It's inconclusive. Well, we have something called the uh, integral, integral test. And what it's saying is 1 over n squared is really like this. And we start at 1. And we go out here forever. Um, it's just a series. Now, it's discrete. So, I mean, it'd be a 2. It'd be really boxes. But we can treat it like an integral, um, an indefinite integral. So improper integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared dn. And most of the places I've seen it, they do it as a uh, as a function of x, just out of habit. Um, that's the limit as a approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to a, 1 over n squared dn, which is the limit as a approaches infinity of negative 1 for n, I believe, yes, uh, from 1 to a, which is negative 1 over infinity, uh, minus minus plus 1 over 1, which is 1. So we have a limit, so we know that this converges because we can take an integral and get a specific answer. For this one, when we do the same thing for 1 over n, we uh, jump to it, we'll make it b this time, 1 to b of 1 over n, we get limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of n from 1 to b, which is infinity minus 0. So this one diverges. Remember, the ratio test just tells us whether convergence or diverges. And if it's 1, it doesn't tell us anything. So we just found out. And this is the integral test. If you can find one, then you can say it converges or diverges. Um, go to this one, rewrite it. I'll just do integral. I keep changing letters to keep people on their toes. From 1 to C. Of uh, this would be n to the negative three halves, because I'm just going one half and one is three halves. Uh, integral from c to infinity of add one and divide by it, negative two, uh, and I'll just put it back where it belongs on the bottom. That's the one half from one to c as c goes to infinity. Well, that's negative two over infinity, square root technically plus 2 over square root of 1, just get 2. A lot of people made a big deal about, oh, that 2 means, it doesn't mean anything. It just means it converges. We got a, excuse me, we got a specific answer then, it converges. So we just did this, we just proved that um, when p equals 1, we have what's called a harmonic series, and it diverges. That's what this says. If p is greater than 1, it converges into the 3 halves. You just saw that. If it's less than 1, it diverges. Um, p equals 1 or p is less than 1. And how much bigger does it have to be? Just the tiniest bit. Even that will converge. And if you think about it, you'll see why. The only time it doesn't converge is if it's uh, natural log when you take the integral or uh, a negative exponent.
pardon me, uh, less than one when you start, because then it ends up on top. So, people would say, well, it keeps growing forever. I mean, this is the series. This is the harmonic series. This is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n. Seems like it's getting smaller and smaller. No, it keeps growing. And if you do the natural log of 20, after you take the integral, that'll give you the area here. Uh, and I'm screwing this up. So bear with me. Yeah, you want to know when is it going to be bigger than 20, so let's write that out. So the integral from 1 to uh, some value, d of 1 over n, is going to be 20 or greater. Just dn greater than 20. You get natural log of d minus natural log of 1 has to be greater than 20. D equals e to the 20th. It's a really, really huge number. But it gets there at the point. I think it takes something like 200 million iterations. If you put in your calculator, you're going to be here for a while. But it will get there. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. So we're going to use this P test as a comparison test. It's, a, it's one of the best ones to use. Um, and you're going to use it as your BN in this. Often you can use other things. You use geometric series, things like that. But 1 over N, which you know diverges. Or you might use 1 over n squared, which you know converges. So this is the limit comparison test. It's pretty handy. Um, if you get a number, then whatever happens. I got a number and I use this one, then they both diverge. I got a number and I use this one, they both converge. These cases very rarely happen. When they do, I actually go back and realize I probably made a mistake somewhere. So, converge or diverge for these. Um, we'll use the limit comparison test. Um, this will be my a sub n. And since it's 2n over n squared, I'm going to compare it to 1 over n. So, we take the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared over 1 over n. We get, uh, I'm going to multiply n and 2n, 2n squared plus n over n squared plus 2n plus 1. Um, I can do lobby tiles rule because they both go to infinity, but you should know this goes to 2. So here we are, we're between 0 and infinity. So whether this term diverges or converges, it does the same thing. Since this diverges, so does this. So now down here, we're going to compare to, uh, like I said, a geometric series. I'm going to go 1 over 2 n. So this is my a of n. My b of n is 1 over 2 to the n which, by the way, I know converges. It's geometric with one half. By the way, notice I don't get integral of convergence or the radius of convergence of any of that nonsense. I just get, hey, it converges. So, again, limit n goes to infinity, 1 over 2n minus 1 over 1 over 2n times 2 to the n over 1. Limit as n goes to infinity, to the n over to the n minus 1. Um, I can do lappy tiles or I can do all sorts of things, but you should realize this is going to go to 1. Basically, same on top and bottom. So this converges, therefore, this also converges because we got a number between 0 and infinity. For this one, I see n on top and n to the third on the bottom. So I'm going to compare it to. 1 over n squared, which I know converges. It's a p-series where n is 2. So here we go again. Limit. As 
as n approaches infinity, 3n plus 2 over n to the third minus 2n, 1 over n squared, flip it up top, 3n to the third plus 2n squared, limit and I tried to erase things and gave me a hard time. Limit n approaches infinity. 3n to the third plus 2n squared over n to the third minus 2n. It's going to give me 3. First one converges. So is this one. And now a tougher one. Don't know what to compare this to. So think about it. I say, you know what? I'm going to go with 1 over n. This is a of n. I'm going to go with 1 over n. And this is a great example of experience in calculus. I mean, you'd like to say, well, I can figure all this out. Like, no, you need, you need somebody guiding you on stuff like this. Because I probably would never have thought to do this. No, I definitely never would have thought. So, limit sine of 1 over n over 1 over n equals a limit as n approaches infinity of n sine of 1 over n. So, I believe that once upon a time, and I could do this with um, Bobby Tall's rule, that I knew that the limit as x approached 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. So I can rewrite this as the limit as n approaches 0, 1 over n. That goes infinity. This goes to, whoops, infinity sine of 1 over n, that went to 0, this goes to my bad, that goes to infinity, or actually it doesn't, but you get the idea, it goes to 0. Um, oh, hang on, let me make sure I got this right. Limit of n, n goes to infinity, goes to 0, infinity, sine of 1 over infinity, sine of 0, sine of 0, great, I got the same thing. Uh, and I happen to know that um, this equals 1. So if this diverges, since I got a number, this also diverges. Keep that one handy. That's, uh, that's tricky stuff. I think I used that in the homework, and it was tricky to put it together. So now we get to alternating series. And notice this video is pretty long. Um, I've been waiting for this one. There's been notes about absolute and conditional convergence, which don't really mean anything until you get to alternating series. There's been notes about non-negative, which really doesn't come into play until you get to alternating series. So this is the uh, negative 1, the m plus 1, times uh, the harmonic series. And this converges, which you might say, whoa, whoa told me that 1 over n does not converge. So it doesn't. But when you slap a negative on, it does. Because if you, well, I'll show you on the bottom why. Give me a second. This one is uh, geometric. And the r value is negative 1 half. And the absolute value of negative 1 half is less than 1. So this also converges. Always watch that geometric. They're like my favorite. Once you recognize them, like, yes, this is going to be easy. This, I don't know what to call it. Um, it doesn't converge. You just look at the end of the term test. Take any term and divide it by the previous one. It constantly gets bigger. But anyway, those are just examples and little things we can do to figure them out. So this is, without any doubt, to me, the most frustrating thing I've worked on.
uh, because I see the rules broken on a regular basis. Um, if it passes the nth term test and alternates, it's going to converge. And we call it converging conditionally. So this is positive. Check almost always is. Um, I've had some where I have sine and cosine that seem to fluctuate between positive and negative. People are like, yeah, yeah, ignore it, which seems insane to me. This is really carefully worded because I've had several where the series looks like this. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it starts to go that way. So what that's saying is any integer n, if I can find some integer n right here, 5, dot, 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 where from that point on, things are getting smaller and smaller, and they get smaller and smaller forever. Okay, yeah, that works which is bizarre, and that's what ties in with what I just said. They get smaller, and as they go to infinity, they go to zero. Great. It's a pretty weak test. I mean, it's really not that big a deal. But when you think about the 1 over n, um, you start somewhere, and then you jump to where you're trying to go. And if it was 1 over n, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller, but not small enough faster. 1 over n with a negative means here. And then here, and then here, and you can see it's getting closer and closer to some spot, and that is our limit. And this is a partial sum, and this is a partial sum, and so on and so on. So that makes sense, but again, it's just a little weak. Um, we do have a error. Um, I think I missed the word here. No, I didn't. Um, for truncation, you just go to the next term, and it's the same sign as the first unused term, whatever the hell that means. Um, so we're going to prove that this is convergent, not absolutely convergent, um, simply by the alternating series. Uh, the negative 1, it doesn't come into play. 1 over n is positive, because n goes to infinity and never goes negative. Um, each term gets smaller. So u of n plus 1 is, I'll write it the proper way, u of n is greater than all the u of n plus 1s. And like I said, maybe the first five terms, it doesn't work for the rest two. And the limit as n approaches infinity of u of n is 0. It's getting smaller and smaller. So using that alternating series test, which I said, just said is very weak, um, it works. Um, so to find the truncation error after 99 terms, you actually go to u of 100. u of 100, which is just um, 1 over 100. Uh, the question is, is it positive or negative? Um, which I had been told the error was always positive, but hey, what do I know? Uh, 99th term, no, 100 term, 101, it should be negative. And I'm just going to put in parentheses because, like I said, I was told that it's always positive. Anyway, it's always going to be less than that because everything after that is going to be smaller. It's going to bounce back and forth like I just showed you. Um, this alternating harmonic series is convergent, but it's not absolutely convergent. Absolutely means absolute value of that is convergent. And it's not. We've already shown 1 over n is not. So it is conditionally convergent. This is bizarre. If something's conditionally convergent, it kind of causes problems because we can rearrange the terms and make a divergent series or a convergent series. It's totally bizarre. So let me show you how it works. So here is the series we just worked with. Um, let's make a divergent series. Uh, the positive terms are One plus one third plus one fifth plus dot dot dot. Uh, we work that out. It's one over two n plus one, which we know diverges. That diverges to infinity. And I'm out of space. So bear with me. And we could also
to say the negative terms. Negative one half minus one fourth. Negative one six. That's negative one over two n, which we know uh, diverges to negative infinity. You might say, whoa, that's negative. That's conditionally coming. Yeah, exactly. Conditionally and convergent means that it goes positive, negative, positive, negative. All negative just means negative times a divergent series. So this one diverges to negative infinity. And we could also say it converges to pi. Um, we just add some terms till we get there. It's totally bizarre. Um, Yeah, it just, I wish I had better examples of this. So those are the positive terms, those are negative terms. So to form a divergent series, just add positive terms until it's greater than 1. Then just go and find some negative terms until it's less than negative 2. and so on and so on. Keep going. It'll just go back and forth, back and forth, and that diverges. You want to make it go to pi? Make it go to pi. Add terms until it's until you're greater than pi. Then add negative. So less than pi, and keep going. And look, it's converging towards pi. You can have it converge or diverge anywhere you want. Totally bizarre. It's just strange. Anyway, be aware of it. Don't lose any sleep over it. So now we test a power series for convergence. We use the ratio test because that really is the only way to get um, an interval, uh, that and a geometric test, um, which really are the same thing if you have a geometric series. I wrote all this out. Feel free to read it. It's nonsense to me. I get it, but it's just nonsense. you got to start testing endpoints is the, the bottom line. I'll show you how to do that. Um, the best way is just to go through examples. So here's our first one. Let's use a ratio test. And um, we're going to ignore the negative 1. We're going to test for absolute convergence. So... Um, we do this, and if it works, uh, then we just test the endpoints since there's a negative in here. Uh, and I'm going to use, uh, oh, excuse me, we're not using the, goodness, I cannot keep all this straight. We are not using the limit comparison test. We're using the ratio test, um, which I do over u of n, and we take the absolute value, so we take that out of play. And then we're going to go check the endpoints and see what's going on. So, this equals x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 times 2n over x to the 2n. These are going to cancel, um, and I'm just, I'm not doing this whole carefully showing how everything works plan. Um, this gets me x squared, if you look at it. So it converges when that's on the interval. So we got to do some math. x squared has to be less than 1. x absolute value has to be less than 1. Back and forth we go to get 2, negative 1, comma 1 is our interval of convergence. And r equals 1 is our radius of convergence. Notice the r equals 1 radius of convergence. It doesn't matter whether the endpoints work or not. Um, we got to check the endpoints. Um, we got 
and check them both. Um, I believe we can only only have to check them once because uh, it's going to be the same whether it's positive or negative. So we plug in x equals negative one. We've got negative one to the n plus one. Negative one to the two n over 2n. Uh, that's squared, so whether I put a negative 1 or 1, I'm going to get the same thing. So we would say we get uh, squared, so that one's just going to vanish. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n. Does that converge? It converges conditionally. So here it is all together now. Radius convergence, 1. Absolute, the interval of convergence. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm good about this. Yeah. <laughs> so by checking the endpoints, we say the interval of convergence since it works conditionally, we can write that. The converge, the values of absolute convergence. Pardon me when my computer comes back to life. Values of absolute convergence are negative one to one, and the values conditional convergence x equals plus or minus 1. Wow. Pause and make sure you know what's going on there. Let's do the ratio test. n approaches infinity. 10x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 10x to the n equals limit as n approaches infinity. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to put absolute values around this. And I probably should have done that on the previous one, too. Absolute value, absolute value. P -p 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 squared, I was able to throw the absolute value out. Yeah, i got to make sure I do that. Um, absolute value, and we get 10x to the uh, first over n plus 1. Um, this goes to 0. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this converges absolutely for all x. Radius convergence is infinity, um, and then converges absolutely, so that's the interval of convergence. Um, make sure I get all this absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, IOC, infinity to infinity. Now here's the one that's a little bit interesting. Conditionally, convergent. Are no values. It's absolutely convergent everywhere, so we don't have to worry about conditionally convergent. Another example. Ratio test the sucker. Limit and plus one. Divided by n factorial x plus one to the n equals limit 
plus one. An absolute value of x plus one. So, what's going on? N goes to infinity. This goes to infinity. If x equals does not equal negative one, it goes to zero. If x equals one, radius convergence zero. Interval of convergence. Notice it's brackets. Uh, interval of point where the series converges absolutely. Negative one. Conditional convergence. None. And I believe this is our last one. I got a flow chart too, but that's another story. Wow, longest video I've ever made, people. Be proud. Uh, limit as n approaches infinity of un plus 1 for un. Limit as n approaches infinity x minus 3 to the n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 over x minus 3 to the n over 2n. These are going to cancel as they go out to infinity. Um, and then I'm just left with x minus 3. So x minus 3 has to be less than 1. Do this in my head. So 2 less than x less than 4. Now check the endpoints. Put in 2, so we get this is um well it's not my interval convergence yet. My radius I'm done with. Radius is 1. Yay. Check the endpoints and we get 2 minus 3 to the n. 2n, which is negative 1 to the n over 2n. That one works. It's conditional. The other one, 4 minus 3 to the n over 2n equals 1 over 2n, does not work. So let's tie it all together here. What's my interval of convergence? You can have your two. You can't have your four. Absolutely convergent. Two to four. Conditionally convergent. X equals two. Holy hell. Merry Christmas. God bless you all for sticking through to the 34th minute. Here's a flow chart. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. It runs you through. All right. It's pretty handy. Notice the ratio test is pretty much what you're doing. Um, although you can find out that it diverges early on, which would be really nice because then you don't have to find the radius convergence, the interval of convergence, or any of that nonsense. Um, we're not doing the nth root test here in this step in the middle. If I can write on this, or it's going to cause a problem. Yes, I can. And that says series divergence if u of n does not go to zero. So, good luck. Um, and now I get to just give you the stupidest news ever. We're just finding out if these things that diverge or converge. And why? Well, if they converge, then we can play with them. If they diverge, we can't. And we're not playing with them in this class. I mean, this is just introduction to a whole nother level of calculus. We don't know what it converges to. We showed that the big three, sine, 
cosine e to the x converged? Absolutely. The rest, well, we're not so sure. There's a wonderful example of this where it can really mess with your head a little bit, but I think your head's been messed with enough. So, enough. Way more than enough. Happy math and good luck and God bless.